On our spring 2021 trip to Orlando, we visited several attractions along I Drive, and today we are going to show you one of those places, a museum called Titanic the Artifact Exhibit. You can see here the tour starts with one of two really cool photo ops. On this one, you can pose on the front railings of the Titanic and be king of the world like Leo and Kate. I have always been fascinated by the history of the Titanic and couldn't wait to check this place out. As you enter, you are given a boarding pass and you assume the identity of one of the passengers on the ship. From there, you watch a short film about the history of the fateful first sailing of the Titanic. And then you are taken back to 1912 to experience this tour featuring almost 200 artifacts from the sunken cruise ship as well as full recreations of rooms within the Titanic. As we take you on this tour, we aren't going to show you everything. When it comes to museum tours, we don't want people to feel like they've seen it all on a video, so now there's no need to go see the museum in person. We want to show you enough to give you an idea what the experience is like, but also help you decide if this is something you and your family may want to see on a trip to Orlando. Some of the things you see in this museum are just recreations. If the item is an actual artifact from the Titanic wreckage, you'll see the red and white logo of the white star line on the description card, like you do on this card discussing the porthole window frame. This is a recreation of the Marconi room, where ship crew sent out distress signals on a Marconi transmitter. Nothing here was originally on the Titanic. This was just created to show us what the equipment in the room looked like. We saw this display of actual Titanic artifacts rescued from the wreckage that included a tobacco spittoon, a ceramic jug, a mustard jar, and a chamber pot kept in passenger rooms in case of a sudden bout of seasickness. The next display taught us about the differences between first, second, and third class dining. First Class had a couple of nice cafes, but their main dining sat 532 diners and served 11 course meals. The second and third class meals were less impressive, of course. The museum actually holds regular dining events called the Titanic First Class Dinner Gala that you can attend for a separate ticket price of $69 a person for adults and $42 for children, which features a cocktail party, a tour of the exhibits, a first class dinner, and reenactments of the night of April 12, 1942. Here's an example of some actual Titanic floor tiles. as well as some personal items of passengers that were found in the wreckage. They really went all out on their room recreations, trying as closely as possible to match the items that actually were on the Titanic. This is a full-scale representation of the first-class parlor suite. The museum attempted to match the furniture, carpet, and wood panel walls as closely as possible to match some of the suites on the ship. There was an interesting display of money, both coins and bills, as well as playing cards retrieved from the ship's wreckage. And next was a recreation of the Veranda Cafe, one of two cafes open to first-class travelers. The room included examples of the place settings used on the Titanic, as well as a photo of the actual Veranda Cafe on the ship taken prior to the ship's first voyage. Next, we want to show you the second photo op you will encounter here. You can get your picture taken on a recreation of the Titanic's Grand Staircase, which you will no doubt remember if you've seen the movie Titanic or any number of documentaries on the topic. By the way, we would appreciate it if you would click the thumbs up button to register with YouTube that you like this video. Thanks for helping us out. So you may recognize this part of the ship from multiple movies where the third class got locked behind a gate and couldn't escape as the ship sank. In truth, some gates may have been shut for a bit in the confusion, but the third class did get to the boat deck and a number of their women and children did make it onto the lifeboats. 
The high loss of life in the third class is believed to be largely due to language barriers, refusal to leave male loved ones behind, and poor communication of details to third class passengers. We then got to this room with the list of all passengers and crew of the Titanic and whether they survived or perished in the sinking of the ship. For example, Alice was assigned the identity of second-class passenger Kate Buss. Kate's name is filled in bold, signifying that she lived through her experience on the Titanic. The names that are just outlined on the list passed away during the tragedy. 60% of the first-class passengers were saved. About 42% of the second-class passengers were saved. About 25% of the third-class passengers were saved and 23% of the crew were saved after the ship that God himself could not sink hit an iceberg and sank to the bottom of the ocean less than three hours later. Speaking of that iceberg, the Titanic Museum in Orlando has a replica of the iceberg that is kept at the same temperature as the waters on that night in which most passengers died of hypothermia. In normal times, you can walk right up and touch the iceberg and feel how cold it is. When we were there, any exhibits that involved touch were roped off due to the pandemic, so we couldn't touch the iceberg. But just by standing near it, you could feel it was very cold. There was more to the museum, of course, including the second largest piece of Titanic ever recovered that weighs about three tons. It is right there among the exhibits in Orlando. We were then emptied out into the gift shop. We really enjoyed this museum, and it's reasonably priced. Tickets are $21.95 for adults and $15.75 for kids under 12. There are also senior citizen, military, and Florida resident discounts. The museum takes about two hours to go through. There are also some guided tours that you can book for an extra fee. I'm Alice. And I'm Jack. Check out these links to videos of other things that we enjoy in the Orlando area. And don't forget to subscribe so we can see you the next time we're traveling through.